Welcome to this edition of Hidden History Stories from the Secret City. I'm Keith McDaniel, along with my co-host, Ray Smith. And uh, Ray, today's show is going to be a little bit different from what we normally talk about. Uh You know, we've done all kinds of things before. We've talked about just recently, the last one, we talked about integration and the Oak Ridge 85. And we've talked about trails and all kinds of things. And as and we talked with Mick Weist about growing up in Oak Ridge. And so we've had a variety of, of types of topics. And uh, so we've asked our friend uh, who's been on the, the, the show before, uh, Mike Stilo, to come back and, and be with us. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about ghosts and UFOs. Wow. Now Oak you Ridge. Talk, about, talk about hidden history. You're going, you're going to really get into the hidden part now, huh? <laughs> that is true. And I'm not sure that we have that much information, but I might have a special treat later on that uh, oh. something that we can, we can talk about. But Mike, uh, you, you, you are a, a researcher and a historian and you know lots of things. And I understand you've got a, an Oak Ridge ghost story which may be appropriate since, you know, we're coming up on October. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've heard and what you've learned? Well, Keith, uh, you know, initially <clears throat> when I worked in records at K25, we, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of records from the 40s, and there were, there were I think, somewhere around 12, 13 fatalities during, during the wartime. So there was a little talk about ghosts and, you know, were there, there was a suicide or two, and there were disgruntled workers and people that, you know, well, and, and not too long ago, uh, Ray had brought a guy to town that was going to do some ghost uh, investigations, and he asked me about that. But uh, and not having been there in the 40s, of course, I didn't have firsthand knowledge. But now when I hired him in the early 2000s, we had a guy that uh, I didn't work with him. He was already gone by then, but he had worked in the vault, the K-25 records, for 20-something years, and he had been a coal miner before that. Well, he worked a lot of overtime, and he stayed late hours, and he was really dedicated. Well, at some point after he was gone, they would joke and say, uh, you know, that, that, that's him upstairs. We'd hear noises and stuff like that. I would hear noises. I mean, and my coworker, who was a very sober, very serious guy, one day someone came down to him and he said, hey, who, who's that upstairs? And, you know, you had to have a queue clearance. You couldn't just get in. It was a vault. And he's like, I'm the only one here besides the ladies downstairs. Well, I guess I saw a guy in blue, blue coveralls. And RP, I think, got uh, chills down his spine. He, he said, well, it sounds like Gentry, and then he laughed. You know, well, nobody ever figured out where that guy came from, or or who he, uh, you know, and that. So, so from then on, we would hear noises upstairs, and we were downstairs. From downstairs, we'd hear noises upstairs, and so for years, I don't know. Of course, that vault's been torn down now. So if there was a ghost there, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where he's gone, but it, it was. Uh, it kind of unsettled a lot of the people. You know, he was a friendly I guess you know but just the the idea that you know you're supposed to have a key clearance so no one could have gotten in there uh, without going through the walls you know (laughs) yeah yeah you know it's it's interesting I've heard I've heard other ghost stories or or other stories about crimes and things such as that in Oak Ridge and this is not really a ghost story but it's a it's a story that kind of goes along with this when my wife and I bought our very first house, it was a D house. And um, we loved that D house. It was wonderful. And uh, we got to know the neighbors. And the neighbors had lived next door to this, this D house for a long, long time. And we had been there several years when the, the lady uh, was talking to my wife. And she told her, she said, now, you know, somebody died in your master bedroom. And uh, I was like, uh, uh, she was like, no. She said, yeah, he committed suicide on Christmas Day oh, in the master bedroom. And I was like, she told me that. I was like, isn't that something they're supposed to tell us when we're looking at a house? It, isn't it, aren't they legally obligated to tell us if somebody died in, in the bedroom that I spend every night? You know, mm-hmm. so uh, so anyway, and also, you know, the, the uh I'd heard stories about the Alexander Inn and, uh, you know, once it, once it shut down the old guest house that there was, uh, you know, that there was figures that, uh, could be seen around the Alexander. 
course, at that point, it may have been homeless people, but you know, who know, who knows what it could have been. You, you know, you know, Keith, uh, we had uh, Mick Weast on uh, not too long ago talking about his growing up years, but he also got involved with that ghost issue at the uh, Alexander Inn at the time. Mm -hmm. it, it was back when it was shut down and, and just in a sad state of, uh, of disrepair. And uh, the Ghostbusters or some organization that goes around looking for ghosts contacted him and wanted to spend the night in the Alexander Inn. So he went up there with them and they spent the night in the Alexander Inn looking for, you know, para paranormal activities, using their instruments and, and that sort of thing. And, and I asked him when they uh, got through, what did they report? And he said, well, they, they didn't find anything. No. <laughs> uh, the same thing happened now out at George Jones Memorial Baptist Church. The uh, Steve Goodpasture is the one that spent the night with them, and it may have been the same group. I don't know, but uh, they stayed all night out there looking for some signals, and, and uh -huh. didn't find any either. <laughs> you know, there's it's there's a lot of interest in that. There's a lot of, especially around here in East Tennessee. I know there's several groups that are, you know, ghost hunters, so to speak, and uh -huh. and looking for that. Um, you know, one of the things uh, when I introduced the show today, we're going to talk about ghosts, but we're also going to talk about UFOs. And I know that there are documents that, and Mike, you might can uh, talk a little bit about this as well, but there are documents that identify um, reports of UFOs in Oak Ridge. And these are not recent. These are from decades ago. As a matter of fact, I was familiar a little bit with that. And I had a friend of mine who was teaching a class at Pellissippi, teaching a filmmaking class at Pellissippi. And they decided that they were going to do a mockumentary, which is a, a, a fake documentary uh, about, uh, about UFOs in Oak Ridge. And so they asked me if I would participate. So I found online the little six and a half minute video uh, that they produced. Uh, and what I, I basically, at that time, I was president of the Oak Ridge Heritage and Preservation Association. And I basically played myself. And then they had other actors who played scientists and things such as that. So before we get into our discussion about UFOs, I wanna see if I can play that. And we'll see if we can watch that for about six and a half minutes. So, okay, good, that, that'll be good to see. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. Oh. Mike, you ever heard of a mockumentary? Yeah, I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All so right. You know what we're about to say. Here we go. Here we go. Look at the name. <laughs> We've always seen no credit. There has been for over the Manhattan Project from the very beginning was the biggest secret in the world at the time. It was the largest industrial project, you know, key level. Oh, it's messed up. Let me try it again. Largest city. Okay. Tennessee, or two. Oak Ridge has always had a history of doing secret and private and unconventional things. I have irrefutable proof of a uh, spacecraft. So the report, uh, that came out of this UFO, I know was given by federal employees. And, you know, you didn't hear much about it later. Um, you know, did the FBI come in and kind of squash it and hide that report away and, and, uh, and say, you know, you don't talk about this? Who knows? <laughs> I know in the 50s and 60s in Oak Ridge, uh, there were several sightings of UFOs. Um, I believe it was credible sightings. Uh, they, they, were, they were reported by people that worked at the plant 
in Oak Ridge. Uh, these were respected, respectable, uh, educated folks who, who reported these sightings. Um, I don't think, I, I do remember that there was within a couple of weeks, there were several sightings that were reported in Oak Ridge. Came to this clearing and I saw this, uh, this disc-like object, you know. It was, uh, it was, it was kind of like a frisbee, and it came, uh, came down and kind of skidded to a landing over by these trees. And man, as soon as that happened, every cop car, ambulance, uh, every vehicle you could think of from the uh, federal government was like right there, like magic. There was an official report that was given a couple of workers at one of the plants in Oak Ridge had, uh, had seen an unidentified flying object and uh, reported it, and I believe it was uh, reported to the FBI. If you hadn't seen what I'd seen, you wouldn't think it was anything out of the ordinary. But uh, that's when I started thinking about, uh, pardon the expression, the government conspiracies. Air Force and saw my time, you know, spent a lot of time uh, flying and in flight status and at airports and flight lines. And uh, no, I don't, I don't believe in UFOs. I have, you know, Q level clearance and I still do as, as a, a scientist emeritus. I, I have no proof of any aliens in Oak Ridge. I think that people use UFOs as a way to explain things that they don't understand or haven't encountered before and are strange to them. Um, certainly, I think that like a lot of the lights in the skies were test aircraft and those might be secure so that we wouldn't know the government's not ready to tell us. Certainly, the whole stealth airplane thing demonstrates that there was whole technologies being developed that we knew nothing about until they were ready to tell us about them. I mean, I've seen things in the morning driving to work, work in the fog that uh, I know I wasn't really seeing. Uh, I couldn't have been seeing what I thought I was seeing. And then as I approached it, it obviously wasn't there. At, at first, you know, I kind of doubted that it had happened at all because nobody else was saying anything about it. And like a lot of young people at the time, you know, I had messed around with some things. You know, I drank a little and, uh, you know, I mean, we, we, some of us smoked a little bit. I would say Oak Ridge houses a lot of aliens, illegal aliens. I think it'd be criminal and kind of stupid not to believe that there's life elsewhere in the universe. It's just so big and there are so many billions of star systems. It's inconceivable to do that this would be the only planet in all of the universe to have life on it. That that would be kind of egotistical to think that. So I'm sure there's a lot of life out there, it's just so far, so distant that um, once we ever develop a warp drive or something like that, uh, whatever that might be, I don't think we'll ever, we'll ever know. When the U.S. was sending their first men to the moon, they needed some special equipment that was created uh, for, the, uh, for the astronauts. And one of the things that Oak Ridge did was create the moon box, the actual moon box, that they took to the moon the very first time. They, they designed it, they built it, and uh, so that kind of began this relationship with NASA and the, and the space program. Uh, so there's no reason that I would think that, that uh, Oak Ridge's relationship with the space program and NASA would have, would have ended at the end of that project. I know for many, many years they did things for the space program that are still classified today uh, and, and very, very secret. These people know not to talk about and know not to tell about things that they're not supposed to talk about. So if something were to happen in Oak Ridge, very easily it could, keep, it could be kept a secret for decades. What happens in Oak Ridge stays in Oak Ridge. I've really said too much and, and I don't really think I can comment any further. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We, we've got to remind, we've got to remind folks, hold on a second, let me get rid of that, um, that that was a, that was not a real documentary, that was a mockumentary, it was a fake documentary 
and uh, we all kind of played along. But this was this was done by a group of students at Pellissippi as a as a class project, mm -hmm. and um, so you know it was. But the thing about it is the 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 idea they came to me with the idea because they had heard about the UFO sightings, mm -hmm. the real legitimate UFO sightings that are documented uh, from Oak Ridge. Uh, Ray or Mike, do you have any more information about that? Mike, I, I do uh, not. Well, do you have anything? Well, uh, guys, when, when we first started talking about this, you know, there's a, there is an FBI report that you can get online that I think it's just maybe a page. We have a copy at the library, actually, and it's just a, and I want to say it's 1947, and it just, uh, one of the guys in the military gives his account, and I think there's a couple of private citizens, and pretty sure it's 47, um, but yeah, we could, um, we can locate that, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, fairly mundane, but at the time, they weren't able to explain it. I mean, they, you know, the description of it, and they, they didn't really have an answer at that, you know, right immediately uh, at the time. Do, do you remember where they saw where the sighting was in Oak Ridge? You know, it seems like people could see it from town. You know, maybe like near Jack near town site, Jackson Square. And I, and I can't remember if the if the military people, you know, or, or someone at Y twelve or one of the plants had been able to see it, because it seems like there's a phone call or two. Um, yeah, I made note of it. I'll have to uh, I'll have to look into that maybe for for part two when we when we. Mm -hmm. We bring the ghost in. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, it's it's interesting that uh, uh, we're doing this because I had a friend of mine who who's not really a conspiracy theorist, but he's kind of into that kind of. He's interested in conspiracy theories and things such as that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he that he uh, talked to me about was that it seems to be that there's lots of reports of UF sightings near nuclear facilities and nuclear installations. And, you know, I don't know if that's, if that's just a conspiracy theory talk or if that's actual, an actual fact, I'm sure people are going to have, people are going to have a good time with this, with this uh, episode of hidden history uh, yeah. <laughs> laughing at us, but that's okay. It's part of our history that the, the reports yeah. of the UFO is <laughs> Is part of our history here in Oak Ridge. So, so here's what I've just Googled. Declassified FBI files from 1950 describe detection of an apparent squadron of unknown objects tracked over Oak Ridge installation on October the 12th. It says USAF radar installation at Knoxville picked up indications of 11 objects and perhaps more traveling across controlled area of the atomic energy installation in Oak Ridge. Goes on to talk about the altitude, 5,000 feet, the density, uh, no reasonable explanation for the radar reading jet developed. Uh, although the operators are experienced, reliable personnel, radar set in perfect operating condition. And then four days later, the FBI received details of another similar incident signed by troopers and he gives the names at 255 stopped us at an installation and showed us the object in the north that was traveling toward the northwest it goes on to describe it in mid-october there was a report produced again by another state trooper talking about a ufo and all of these now, we're around Oak Ridge. This one says the FBI summarized their assessment, or lack thereof, <laughs> in the 1950-51 sightings the following way. The opinions of the Security Division, AEC Oak Ridge, and gives all kinds of names about the objects sighted over Oak Ridge, the possibility of practical jokers, mass hysterias, balloons of any description, flights of birds, fallen leaves, insect swarms, particular weather conditions, reflections, flying kites, objects thrown from the ground, windblown objects, insanity, and many other national happenings have been rejected because of the simultaneous witnessing of the objects with the reported radar sightings. 
And because of the reliability of the witnesses, because of the detail, similar description of the objects seen by different persons, <laughs> they were. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Isn't that that's amazing? <laughs> Ray, we need to do, speaking of real of things flying over Oak Ridge, we need to do a show about the 1972 hijacking. Yeah, we do. Uh, we really we'll, do. We'll get there, somebody, we'll talk about there, that. There's a good story there, and mm -hmm. the gentleman is, as far as I know, still alive and living in Knoxville. Okay, that's fantastic. You come on our show? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, guys, thanks so much for being with us, and, and uh, thanks, Mike, for coming in and, and sharing your ghost stories and uh, or your ghost story and helping us a little bit with our UFO sightings. And Ray, yeah, I remember you. we talked about ghosts a little bit this time and talked about UFOs. We're going to follow up on that ghost situation and and the the paranormal activity in East Tennessee. There's a gentleman in Knoxville named J. Adam Smith who contacted uh, some of us in Oak Ridge probably a year ago. And what he does is he provides history tours in Knoxville and other areas tied to paranormal activity and uses that to talk about history. So he wanted to see if we could do something in Oak Ridge that would provide uh, an interest to tourism that would focus on the paranormal activity, but also bring out the history of Oak Ridge. And, and so I met with him and we talked about some possibilities and, and we never settled on anything specific to do next, but we were going to stay in touch. So I reached out to him just a, a, a few days ago and asked him if he would be willing to come on uh, Hidden History with us. And he said he would. So we'll see what comes out of that as a follow on to this one. Okay. Sounds and good. Mike, if you'd like to, if you'd like to join us for that and continuing your research and want to, uh, uh, we'd be happy to have you as well. Oh yeah. Sounds fun. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Sounds great. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ray. And right. folks, thanks for, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.